Beginner reptiles make great pet options, but what if you're looking for something a little bit more unique than a bearded dragon or a corn snake? Sorry, Diamond. Today, we're gonna go over the top five most unique beginner reptiles you probably didn't even know existed. My name's Adam, this is Diamond, you're watching Wiccan's Wicked Reptiles, stick around. Ball pythons and leopard geckos and corn snakes, and you get the idea, all the ones that everybody and their brother has are awesome, and I love them. But some people just want something that's a beginner level pet that not all their friends have. So everything on this list, in my opinion, is a beginner level species. Anybody who's never had a reptile but has done extensive research can go ahead and get one of these and keep them successfully, even if you're not experienced. So let's jump into it. Number five, rubber boas. This is one that I haven't talked about nearly enough. I used to talk about them all the time. I gave it a break and they're back. Before I get into why they're so awesome, there is one caveat here, adults. I would recommend that if you're new, buy them when they're established, at least a year old, because sometimes rubber boas do not eat until after their first brumation. You generally only have to brumate them one time, so they come out of, not the egg, because they're boas, they're live bears. They come out of their mother, and then they need to be brumated, which means kept cool for three-ish months in order for them to start eating. So get one that's established on food, and you're golden pony boy. These are the only naturally occurring boid species in Canada and one of two where their natural range is in North America, the other being rosy boas, which are also awesome by the way, but rubber boas are a little bit more rare and everything on this list will be slightly more expensive than leopard geckos and ball pythons, but absolutely worth it. Rubber boas have a tail that looks like a head because in the wild, what they're gonna do is go into a rat's nest or mouse nest more likely because they're so small and they're gonna use that head as a decoy to kind of fight off the mother as in front of the mother, it eats the babies one by one. Very little. Rubber boas, more like savage boas. These will eat an entire litter of mice in one go. But the nice thing is because they're a cooler species in that they're kept in a cooler temperature, being from Canada, of course, they don't have to eat very often at all. In fact, they have very slow metabolisms and most people, well, depending, a lot of people, I should say, only feed them once a month even though they're that small. They aren't the most beautiful thing in the world. If you're looking for a beautiful boa, go for a Brazilian rainbow or something like that. But I think the brown kind of drabness is endearing to me. And their face is so cute. They're absolutely adorable. And once they get eating, they generally eat very well. I think that they're amazingly well kept and they're amazingly well handled. Just being that, they can be handled and not have to worry about being bitten. And that's a big thing for new keepers. They get scared of snake bites. This is a natural thing. But with rubber boas, you are very, very likely never gonna take a bite from one. They're docile, they're slow, they're not gonna be out in the open a lot, but tolerate handling like we mentioned, but they eat really well and they're very easy to keep. Lower temperatures, kind of dry, very simple in my opinion. I've got one, I'm very lucky. And everyone who has one that has one thinks you need to have one to everybody else. They're amazing species, rubber boas for the win. Number four, Angolan pythons. What the heck is an Angolan python, you might think? Well, that's pretty normal. They're not that common, although they're amazing species. They look kind of similar to a ball python. They're from the same continent, but not the same part of the continent. They like it a little bit hotter than a ball python. Generally, from the people that I breed them that I speak to, they say that they use a little bit more height. They'll exhibit more arboreal behavior in that in the wild, they're going to climb rock faces, and not rock faces, but rock outcrops. So they're gonna get off of the ground and kind of evade the heat from inside these rocky outcrops. So they're gonna be able to climb a little bit. You're probably gonna to wanna to give them some sort of climbing opportunity if you wanna make a rock wall, something like that. But they're easily kept. They're pr You're gonna go after my ear, don't do it. Don't do it. And just because they like it hotter than ball pythons doesn't mean that they're difficult to keep. You can just make their basking spot 
a little bit hotter. The nice thing is you don't have to worry about the humidity as much. They are a little bit drier of a species than ball pythons. And they do have a very similar face. Their labial pits are a little bit bigger. Just the pits in their face is what I'm talking about to help them seek out the little cheese boys that they're gonna eat. And the big difference in terms of just their appearance is the scalation. It kind of looks like there was a bunch of little dots kind of glued to their body. They feel very different. I had the opportunity to handle a few of these guys at an expo one time, and they feel very like a beaded. Like I've never touched a beaded lizard, but how I imagine a beaded lizard would feel. Great comparison. The one main thing here is make sure it's captive bred. I know I got a lot of flack in other videos talking about Angolans because some of the wild caught ones aren't as hardy and they become a little bit nippy sometimes. But if you get a captive bred one right out of the egg, generally they're very docile, easy to handle and a very good snake to keep and not super difficult either. And I guarantee you, not all of your friends are gonna have one. They're difficult to find, they're kind of expensive, but if you do get them, the setup isn't ridiculous to set up. The setup isn't ridiculous to set up. I'm just basically a poet. Number three, Chihuahua geckos. Chihuahua geckos are dope. These are amazing. I think most of us, if you are really into reptiles and you research and you watch a lot of reptile YouTube, you've probably seen Lichianus geckos, which are in the Rachidacalus family. I hope I'm pronouncing that correctly. Sounds like pterodactyl, but not Rachidacalus. Well, that's what we're gonna go with here. They're the second biggest, Chihuahuas are, right? Lichies are the first biggest in the family and in the world. And Chihuahuas are the second biggest in that family. They're very large. We're talking about they can get like nine-ish inches, something around there. They're pretty big especially in comparison to crested geckos, which are very similar. And there's actually been documented cases where a chihuahua and a crested gecko, they, you know, they do the thing where they make a baby. They can actually do that and make a hybrid, which is crazy. Well, they're both from New Caledonia, so it kind of makes sense. Sort of, not saying that just because you're from a continent like rhinos and buffaloes can't make, you get it, you get the idea. Now this is an arboreal gecko, so you'll set them up kind of similar to a crested gecko. Please note, if you're a gecko expert, you know more than me about these guys, but I'm just saying they are similar to a crested gecko. The difference I think, besides like the size and appearance and several other things, is that they're gonna be able to grow their tails back often, where crested geckos can't. Crested gecko drops its tail, it's a frog butt forever and ever but a chihuahua in some cases can grow their tail back if it falls off or is lost at the base. They're more expensive than crested geckos because they're more difficult to breed and more rare and less people are breeding them. But I think that they are amazing. I've never met a chihuahua keeper or breeder who's ever said, you know what, I think I'm gonna get out of them. You see that all the time with other reptiles, but most people I know who have chihuahuas never stop. They're very rewarding to keep as a pet. And the reason that I never really talked about them is for some reason in my head, cause I've never owned one. So I have to rely on the breeders that I've talked to in getting ready for this video. I always assumed that they were more difficult, like a lot more difficult to keep than a gargoyle or a crested gecko, but they're not. These guys are actually pretty similar and they're easy to take care of. The reason you don't see beginners with them is because beginners don't spend a thousand bucks on one of these. I mean, the price varies where you are, but here, if you see them in an expo, oftentimes they're like 800, 900, a thousand bucks. They're pretty expensive. But first time dog breeders often buy golden retrievers, which are three grand. So I don't think it's outlandish to think that a new reptile keeper would spend 800 bucks on an animal. It's kind of something that we do with animals. Oh yeah, and they're rare. Your friends with crested geckos are gonna come over and be like, that is so freaking cool. Chihuahuas are dope. Number two, something I could look at for days and days, mandarin rat snakes. They're rare and they're kept differently than most species, which is why when I had the opportunity at this Rectel Expo to get one, I chose not to. I just didn't have a room that was cool enough in my house that I could keep reptiles in at the time. If that opportunity represented itself now, I'd be flinging dollar dollar bills at this person. Dollar dollar bills, y'all. Until I could bring this thing home because they are beautiful, they're amazing, they're not difficult to keep. And what I mean by this, this is a caveat here captive bred. I'm not talking about ones that are brought in, dehydrated, full of parasites, a little bit skittish. I'm talking about ones that came out of the egg here. They were captive bred, captive raised, worked on as a baby, and fed from the get-go, nothing but captive bred, frozen mice and rats and things like that, that aren't full of parasites is what I'm getting at here. 
Now, the reason people are gonna fight me in the comment section about this is because they're kept cooler than most species and more humid than most species. And because of this, people have it in their heads, and I was guilty of this too, so no shame here. People have it in their heads that they're more difficult to keep. But when I get to number one, no one is going to argue with me, and it's kind of the same conditions. Back to mandarin rat snakes. These are small-ish type of snakes. Imagine similar size to a corn snake, which no one would argue is a beginner level snake. We're talking about four and a half-ish feet, somewhere around there on either end. And because they're so beautiful and so unique and so rare, I promise you, if your friend walks into your house, if someone looks at your house, someone looks at a picture on Instagram and sees this, they are going to ask questions. Nothing really looks like this in terms of non-venomous snakes. It's, in my opinion, very close. If them and the Brazilian rainbow boa, like what is the most beautiful, these guys might just take the cake. And my argument here, because people say that humidity is difficult for newer keepers, which maybe they're right, my argument is most people keep them with a humid hide that they can go into, keep the rest of their enclosure semi-humid so you don't have to worry about it drying out too much and they always have that place to retreat if they want it more humid, and because you're going to evaluate your reptile's condition and the way they act, you're gonna know what the best setup is. So as you keep it and become more experienced, you'll actually become a better reptile keeper. I don't know if that made sense the way I said it, but it sure makes sense up here. It's shiny there too. Mandarin rat snakes, I'm gonna get some blowback, but I fully support it and here's why. Number one on this list is just a four wheel drive version of a mandarin rat snake. Cave geckos, especially Chinese cave geckos. Now, Japanese cave geckos, from what I know, are pretty similar and probably fit, but I'm gonna talk about Chinese cave geckos because that's what I keep and that's what I know. They are also kept very cool and very, hu or somewhat humid anyway, pretty humid. So it's kind of like a mandarin rat snake, except for they're smaller, obviously, and no one's gonna argue that they're not a beginner species. Pretty small, similar to a leopard gecko. A lot of people will say like, imagine a leopard gecko was cosplaying as uh, an emo band from 2008. That's kind of what these guys look like. If there was a Hollywood Undead cover band and reptiles had to play in it, I think cave geckos would definitely be at the forefront of this band. That's what I'm saying is they look kind of unique. They So they have similar requirements in terms of space, of an African fat tail or a leopard gecko, although they're a little bit smaller, but their temperature is lower and their humidity is higher. So I don't think it's difficult and I think it's really easy and there's no kind of fear factor. There's never back to Joe Rogan. With these animals, because they're not gonna bite you, simple diet, if you can feed a leopard gecko, you can feed a cave gecko. The enclosure isn't too big and it's not too difficult to keep up with the furnishings and all of that. So cave geckos, take the cake. In my opinion, those are the number one beginner reptile that you probably didn't know about and your friends are gonna look at like, man, that's pretty freaking cool. What the heck is that thing? And that's it. Is there a reason to do a part two of this video? Let me know in the comment section below. Should we do a part two? Cause there's lots more that fit this list. Hit the thumbs up if you enjoyed the video and subscribe if you don't wanna miss the next one. I really appreciate it. And as always, a special thank you to the Patreon supporters. You guys are freaking amazing. You get videos early, discounts on the merch, you get to know about reptiles in my collection. You've seen the tortoise enclosure that cost an arm and a leg and several afternoons, but is super awesome that is attached to my house. If you want extra content for as little as $1 a month, you can be a Patreon supporter too. And I've run my mouth way more than I should have. So uh, after you hit subscribe, that means it'll see you on Thursday.